Breck Garamella here. I'm super pumped up to get you started with your Mavic 3. So the first thing we got to do is unbox it. Now I have the Cine Edition right here. So we're going to start with the unboxing. One thing I like to do is just use this little Swiss Army knife. Opens up nice and easy. First thing I like to do is to open it up. After opening it, make sure you have all the parts and accessories. First thing you do is just, you can unhinge the drone by just lifting that up, bringing this off. Okay, charge all your batteries. Now, if you have the charging hub, you can put them in like this. And then all you need to do is connect the power bank and just plug it in right here. And then plug this into an outlet. So you can charge your batteries, your controller, and then also make sure you charge your device fully for all your firmware updates. So we're gonna do that now. If you got the combo, you have the charging hub, which allows you to charge all three batteries together. If not, leave the battery in the drone and charge via the USB-C port in the back. You'll see the four battery lights moving sideways, which lets you know it's charging. Note, the smart controller is set to sleep mode before its first charge. Now to charge the controller, connect it via USB-C cable and charger. Then you're gonna download the DJI Fly app on your device, whether you have an Android or Apple device. Sometimes the DJI Fly app can be a little glitchy because it's a relatively new app. So I uninstall the DJI Fly app and delete it completely from my phone or tablet. Then I reinstall it and therefore it's up to date and everything is running properly. So I recommend you do that. Next, remove the storage cover, which is basically a gimbal cover. Always have the gimbal cover off when you turn on the drone. When the drone is off, make sure the gimbal cover is on the drone and this will help maintain the integrity of the gimbal for a really long time. So I always recommend you have that cover on when you don't use it. All right, if you have the normal DJI Mavic 3, you're gonna open up this cover right here and put in your micro SD card. If you have the Cine version, you don't need a memory card because it automatically stores the footage on the drone's internal solid state drive. Now DJI says the drone can hold up to 512 gigabytes. Now, I'd recommend carrying two 256 gigabyte memory micro SD cards. So you always have a backup just in case. Also, if you put all your footage on one memory card and your drone crashes, then you'll lose all your footage. So I like to use two memory cards when possible and make sure you push the memory card in all the way so it's secure. I like to use a small Swiss Army knife to do this, which I use on all my shoots for many small things like this. Links to all this gear is in the video description. Now SanDisk Extreme Pro makes great micro SD cards and in the description below are my recommended micro SD cards. All right, to turn the battery on, you press it once and then you press it again immediately and hold it down for a couple seconds and the battery will turn on. You wanna do the same thing with the remote controller or smart controller if you have the Cine version. Now before we activate the drone and get into the DJI Fly app, you have to make sure everything is linked. Your drone and controller should be linked together. However, if you crash your drone and get a new drone or use a different controller or something like this, you're gonna to have to link them together. So I'm gonna show you how to link your controller to your drone right now. And if you just bought the DJI Mavic 3, you can skip this step and go on to the activation step, which is in the next step after this. To link the aircraft with the remote controller, first make sure the drone is powered on. To do this, press the drone battery once and then a second time for three seconds. Then turn on your controller by pressing it twice, holding the power button for three seconds on the second press. So now your controller and drone are on. If you have the non-Cine version, connect your controller to your device with a cable, then open the DJI Fly app. Look in the lower right hand corner of the DJI Fly app home screen. If it says connection guide, that means you need to link the drone to the controller. Press connection guide, press Mavic 3, then press pair in the app, then hold the power button and the drone battery for four seconds or long enough to hear a loud beeping sound followed by two small beeping sounds. When the LED lights and your drone battery and controller stop moving from side to side and are solid and your camera view in the app returns to normal, your drone and controller have been linked successfully. All right, so now it's time for activation. So your controllers turn on, your drones turn on. If you have the Cine version, make sure the smart controller is connected to the internet via Wi-Fi. If you have the non-Cine Mavic 3, make sure your device is connected 
connected to Wi-Fi. So I recommend you do this in your home or a place with a strong Wi-Fi connection. Once you have that, press on the DJI Fly app. Now in the DJI Fly app, you'll see the activate button. Press the activate button and then it's just self-explanatory. Continue on through the app to activate your drone. If you've already used a DJI drone before, you can just put in that email and password and just go along with that. But if you're completely new to DJI drones, then you have to create that in the activation process. So just use whatever email and password that you're going to remember. I would recommend you write that down so you don't lose it when you're done. It'll say activation successful and this will only take a minute or two to complete. Now one thing that's really important is you get the DJI insurance for your drone. With a lot of things I don't recommend you get the insurance but when it comes to drones you're definitely going to want to get the insurance. Okay not only will this give you a peace of mind when you fly but it will also save you a ton of money if you crash your drone. I got the two year plan which covers me for three replacements. So DJI Care Refresh two year plan offers three replacements in two years, including two chances to use flyaway coverage. Flyaway coverage covers you if your drone goes missing during the flight and you can't find it. However, flyaway replacement coverage cannot be used if the account or device was not bound before the flyaway incident occurred. But since I covered that earlier in this video, you'll have nothing to worry about when flying. And when it comes to accidents like water damage, collisions, or missing aircraft, you can have your product replaced for a reasonable additional cost. For DJI Mavic 3, the first DJI Care Refresh replacement fee is $159. The second replacement fee is $199 and the third replacement is $229. If you use the replacement available for flyaway coverage, the replacement fee will be $739. One very important thing is after activation, you only have 48 hours to buy this DJI insurance. If you buy it after 48 hours, it's a real pain. DJI will make you show proof of this and this and you'll have to fly your drone and send them a video and it's very complicated. So to make things a lot easier just buy the insurance within two days after activation. So activate your drone then buy the insurance and you're all good. One thing I like to do with all my drones after I first get them, after I activate my drone and then buy the insurance, I turn everything off, the drone and controller, and then also log out of the DJI Fly app, exit out of that, and then once everything is turned off, now turn on your drone and the controller and go back into the DJI Fly app. It's a good idea to do this because you can see a firmware update that you need to do in the main screen of the DJI Fly app. Now, if you need a firmware update, it will say update or firmware update. Press on that and then wait until it finishes doing a firmware update. Do not turn off anything or exit the app during the firmware update. Just let it do its thing. When the firmware update is finished, the controller and drone will remain powered on. Now before doing your firmware update, make sure everything is fully charged. You don't want to go below 50% because then it will not complete the firmware update. It also can mess things up. So just to keep everything good, make sure everything is charged when you're doing your activation and your firmware updates. When your firmware update is complete, I recommend turning everything off and logging out of the app and then turning everything back on just to make sure there are not any more updates. All right, now that your activation and your firmware is completed and your batteries are charged, we're ready to fly. When carrying or traveling with the drone, I highly recommend you put the storage cover, aka gimbal cover, on the Mavic 3 to maintain the integrity of the gimbal and protect the lens. Put it on like this. The great thing about this carrying bag is that it also turns into a backpack if you need more space. I recommend you go in an area with a lot of open space. Don't go close to buildings or trees or obstacles when you're first starting. Once you get good, you can do that, but, but just for your first couple of flights, it's good to go into open space just to practice, and especially if you're a new drone pilot. Let's get into this. So go find an open space away from people and obstacles. Make sure you have a micro SD card in your drone if it's a normal Mavic 3. And like I said earlier, make sure you take off the storage cover before turning on the drone. The gimbal always needs to be turned off before you turn on the drone. The propellers are pretty easy to attach, but if it's your first time, it could be a little challenging. One thing to note is that there's two types of propellers, just a normal gray propeller and then a gray propeller with a white ring. And what you want to do is match the gray with the gray on the drone and then the white ring with the little white lines on the drone. So the white with the white and the gray with the gray, then push the propeller down into the drone. And then with your other hand on the motor, just turn the motor or you can hold the motor and turn the propeller both ways work. 
I always recommend that you make sure all four propellers are secure before takeoff. In a little bit, I'm gonna show you how to start your drone so you know if something's wrong with the propellers when you start it. So let's get on to the next step before takeoff. Now double check just to make sure your battery is all the way in there, nice and secure. You don't wanna lose your battery when you're up in the air. Also, press the battery once to make sure all four lights go on, which indicates that it's fully charged. Take out the two joysticks on the side and then screw them into the left and right part of the controller. So you have your joysticks there when you place your drone down for takeoff. Then unfold the antennas and make sure they're facing up. One very important safety feature is to make sure the drone is facing away from you so the rear end or the back end of the drone should be closest to you and the front of the drone should be facing away from you. This will also make it easier to fly right away once you take off. So to turn on the drone, press the battery once and you'll see the battery level, but you press it twice and hold it on the second time and the drone will turn on. You do the same thing with the controller, pressing it once and then pressing it again, holding it and the controller will turn on. Then press the DJI Fly app on your smart controller or device. Let's just talk about basic flight features of this drone. On the controller, you wanna put it in normal mode for takeoff. Normal mode flies up to about 34 miles per hour. Now if you put it in S mode, that's sport mode, which flies up to about 43 miles per hour. And then in C mode or city mode, the drone flies to about 11 miles per hour. So at takeoff, always use normal mode or N mode because the obstacle avoiding sensors and the GPS are on, which will help you avoid hitting things when you get the drone in position to start recording. Before takeoff, there are a few necessary things to do. I will go over the most necessary things, but in my DJI Drone Pro course, I show you all the settings in the app to get the most out of this drone. In the DJI Fly app, press Go Fly, then press the three dots in the upper right hand corner. Under the safety tab, set the max altitude and auto RTH altitude to a height that is higher than all the buildings or obstacles where you're gonna fly. This will allow your drone to return to its takeoff point without hitting anything if you press the return to home button also called the RTH button. It's worth noting that the smart controller sticks come already calibrated, but if not, the DJI Fly app will let you know with a red and white notification that pops up on the screen that says RC calibration required. In that case, calibrate the controller sticks by pressing on the three dots in the upper right hand corner, press control, then scroll down to RC calibration and press that. Then press start. Push the control sticks and rotate the dial to their maximum range several times in all directions. If you have no notifications and your GPS signal is good, it's time for takeoff. Now to start the propellers, press the joysticks down and in at a 45 degree angle simultaneously and the propellers will start. Once the propellers start, you can see if any propellers are loose. They might come off, so just make sure the propellers are fine before you do anything. You don't have to do anything just yet, you can take your thumbs off the controller and just let the propellers turn. Then you're gonna wanna press the left joystick up to make the drone go up in the air. After the drone takes off about four or five feet, it will record the return to home point so you're all set to go out and fly. And you can then always press the return to home button and the drone will return to you. If you have flown DJI drones before in normal mode or end mode, it flies pretty much exactly the same. So on the left joystick, if you press up, the joint, the drone will go up in the air. If you press down, it will go down. If you press left, it will pan left. If you press right, it will pan right. Now onto the right joystick. If you move the control stick to the left, the drone's gonna go left. If you move it to the right, it's gonna go right. If you move it up, the drone is gonna the drone's gonna go forward. And if you move it down, the drone's gonna go backward. So once you're in the air, if you're a complete beginner, take the right joystick and press up and that'll make the drone go forward. And while you're pressing up, you can take the left joystick and either go left or right. And now the drone will turn as you're going forward. These are very basic moves, but the fundamentals are very important. So make sure you practice them if you're a complete beginner so you feel comfortable. So you don't have to look at the joysticks and can do it intuitively without thinking. So when you're in normal mode, if you wanna stop the drone or make the drone break and hover in place, press the pause button and the RTH button. Now let's talk about photography and then video. Press the photo button halfway with your right index finger to autofocus. Press it all the way down once to take a photo. Use your right index finger to press the record button to start recording video. Press this button again to stop video recording. Use your left index finger to adjust the gimbal pitch on the dial. Use your right index finger on the dial to adjust the zoom, turning it left and right to zoom in and out. To review your photos and videos, press the little playback button here. You'll see two tabs on the top that say aircraft and DJI Fly. The aircraft will be your highest resolution files and your DJI Fly will be your low resolution files. 
which I consider backups if anything happens to your memory card or solid state drive. I recommend downloading your footage from your memory card or solid state drive onto an external hard drive when you get home. To make the drone automatically come home, press the RTH button on the controller or hold the RTH button on the DJI Fly app screen. The obstacle avoidance doesn't work in low light or at night, so I wouldn't recommend using the RTH button when flying in low light. Personally, I only recommend using the RTH button if it's absolutely necessary, and I explain the best way to return your drone home in my free DJI drone webinar, which you can watch by clicking on the link below in the video description. When landing the drone, hold down the left control stick until the propellers stop. For the Mavic 3, let me go over a few of the most important features. Let's start with autofocus. By default, the Mavic 3 will autofocus, also called AF, and you can tap the AF button to switch to MF, tap it again to go back to autofocus, in manual focus or MF, you drag your finger up and down to adjust the focus. Let's talk about exposure using AE or auto exposure. In auto settings, using AF or auto focus mode, tap the screen and a yellow box will appear showing you where the focus is. This is a small yellow sun icon next to this box, which you can drag up and down with your finger to adjust the exposure. Once you have the exposure the way you want it, tap inside the box and the exposure will stay locked as it is. You can change this by tapping on another area of the screen or adjusting the settings in the lower right hand corner of the DJI Fly app. DJI has a feature called Explore Mode, which allows you to use the second smaller camera, allowing you to zoom in and out. You can enter this Explore Mode by tapping on the binoculars on the DJI Fly app screen, you will then see a 1x underneath the binoculars. There are many ways to zoom in and out. The first way is to press the 1x button. Every time you press it, it will zoom from 1x to 2x to 4x to 7x to 14x to 28x. You could tap and hold this 1x button and drag your finger up and down to zoom in and out, but I wouldn't use this for a shot as it will not be smooth. Similarly, you could pinch the screen with two fingers and zoom in and out like you do on a smart device, though I wouldn't recommend this way either. The next way is the way I do it. First, using the normal remote controller, press the FN button and the left dial simultaneously to zoom in and out. On the RC Pro smart controller, I use the right dial to zoom in and out. All right, if you found this video helpful, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up and shared it with a friend. If you wanna take your drone skills to a whole nother level, consider trying out my DJI Drone Pro video course, which has more than 50 videos just like this one, showing you how to maximize your DJI drone and fly like a professional filmmaker. In that course, I also include many bonuses, such as my pre-flight checklist to make sure you never forget anything, my cinematic drone LUTs to make your videos look incredible in an instant with a simple drag and drop. I walk you through everything I know about DJI drones and I've flown them all. A link to that course is in the video description. I also have a free DJI drone training video where I show you my top seven secrets for flying DJI drones and answer the most frequent questions I receive from viewers like you. You can watch that free video by clicking right up here or in the link below. I appreciate you hanging out with me and wish you an amazing new adventure with your Mavic 3. I'm Brett Caramella, the Drone Pilot Pro, and remember, fly like a pro.